All right, Macy's drive to attract data center investments worth billions of dollars could strain its water and also electricity supplies in coming years, says experts, particularly in industrialized states like Selangor and also Johor. And of course, potential electricity demand from data centers is expected to hit over 5,000 megawatts by 2035. Estimates national electricity company Tenaga National Berhad, TNB, and data center capacity is measured by the megawatts of electricity they consume. And to discuss further on this, uh, we have in our studio uh, Coach Wan Zen, Group CEO and also co-founder Plus X Energy. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Coach Wan. Uh, first of all, with this data that we have from the TNB, right, uh, the projection of uh, the electricity demand by 2035, how does this align with the current tra uh, trajectory of the clean energy initiatives that we have in Malaysia, uh, particularly based on your expertise as well? And what other strategies can be you know, employed to ensure that uh, this demand is met sustainably? Mm, yeah, so I would say this is a data uh, center kind of demand um, based on what TNB uh, have measured from uh, 5 gigawatt and potentially as what we heard in the market can up to like about 11 gigawatt. Basically, it's quite aligned with Malaysia NETR, uh, National Energy Transition Roadmap plan. Yeah. Because what we plan is by 2035, uh, we would like to achieve 40% of the country energy is powered by renewable energy. Mm. So it's something pretty quite aligned with that. And also we do understand a lot of these data centers, they need the energy from clean energy. So definitely they will look for a country like Earth that we have this plan. Mm. And if you move forward to ask about so what's the strategy to work on that? I would say uh, there's a plenty of this uh, current regulation and policy to uh, support on this uh, huge energy demand, especially we need a lot of energy uh, supply by renewable energy, such as the existing uh, policy like uh, net energy metering, or it can be like a large-scale solar or CGPP. However, recently, Malaysia is going to launch another a new policy guideline called CRESS, uh, mm. C-R-E-S-S, which is Corporate Renewable Energy uh, Supply Scheme. Yep. Okay. So I will further expand further, but this is all the policy that it will able to capture the huge uh, energy demand and the supply, and majority from renewable energy. Mm. Uh, we're going to touch a little bit on CRES, and also sure. the, what kind of clean energy solutions do you see, and also infrastructure. This is very important infrastructure improvements should we focus on our prioritize to balance you know, this demand and also at the same time our sustainable journey. Uh, in Malaysia in terms of power generation and uh, distribution capabilities. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I would say uh, for the clean energy solution right now, we do understand Malaysia, we are in a quite a good uh, geographic uh, position, hmm. which is uh, definitely a lot of this energy uh, uh, we are able to source from solar. Yeah. So, solar energy, I would say, it will be one of a key majority uh, renewable en energy sources for us to supply to the grid. And definitely, I will say right now, in the past until today, we are able to see Malaysia clean energy at this moment, roughly about 25% of energy is all supplied by renewable energy. And solar is one of it uh, after these uh, hydropower plants. So solar, we are able to see from rooftop and also from ground water solar farm, which is something that's scalable as well. Yeah. So <coughs> I would say um, in order to, make, to, to capture all this, right, Malaysia on the solar energy will be one of the key focus because uh, it will be able to scalable, as what I mentioned, on building <coughs> and also on the ground. Mm. At the same time, it's also supported by a couple of those uh, government policy and also this uh, uh, new uh, agenda which I mentioned. Yeah. So, however, on the infrastructure side, I would say it's something that we're really concerned because um, definitely if we look into compare with other countries in Southeast Asia, Malaysia infrastructure, I would say, consider quite stable. Mm. Yeah. And also right now, it's also gradually we are moving towards to a smart grid because if you look into TMB, from time to time, let's say from our house, yeah. we also change our meter from, uh, from the normal meter. meter to smart meter. Yeah. And also on the, this uh, TMB grid level, they also progressively upgrade their infrastructure towards to the smart grid. Yeah. Because, which is better, so? Which is better because yeah. when the whole country we have more renewable energy, uh, which is, depends on the weather situation, we need the grid to be smarter, mm -hmm. able to stabilize, to manage and also to control on the demand side and also on the supply side. Right. At the same time, besides the infrastructures on the whole country grid level, upgrade to a smart grid level, at the same time, we will, you will see one more new technology. It will be something that really hot and also going to implement uh, aggressively in the whole country, which is battery energy uh, solution system, which we name it as BESS or BEST. Mm -hmm. yeah. So battery storage, it will be something able to stabilize the whole um, infrastructures for national security and also for the national grid 
uh, this uh, uh, infrastructure stability as well. Mm -hmm. Because we do understand renewable energy, this always depends on weather. And when the grid is smarter, but we need a capacitor, which is like a power bank ah. to store the uh, renewable energy. So we were able to supply the firm power, which is a stable power to the grid, to make sure all the grid infrastructure it will not get impacted by the renewable energy, which it will, you are a bit difficult to estimate because there's an up and down from right. time to time. Right. Okay. Uh, that one is for national level perspective. But yep. uh, if you look at it in terms of, in the context of data center, mm -hmm. two uh, states uh, are the main focus, which is the Slangor and also Johor. Mm -hmm. But how do you foresee that the, the in terms of the uh, uh, electricity distribution generated by the sustainable, uh, by solar or by other means, mm -hmm. uh, can be channeled or can be focused on these two states. And uh, are these two states uh, focusing heavily on the solar farm right now? Mm, yeah. So um, I would say usually we have to look into this into two different angles. Okay. First is on the decentralized angle, the other one is on the centralized angle. Right. So decentralized angle, it will be mainly for Johor and also for Selangor. Mm. Definitely, these two areas, they have a lot of huge uh, demand on the energy side, especially when there are more new data centers coming in. Mm. So, what usually what we can do is on the centralized, uh, decentralized uh, area, which is, uh, I would say, on a different state, uh, on that level, actually, we are able to plan renewable energy power injection, mm. especially when we are going to build any solar system on the rooftop or let's say on the groundmaster solar farm. Usually, we all have to do a power system study or we name it as PSS with a uh, TMB to make sure that particular substation, they were able to capture that much of green power. So <clears throat> we were able to make sure for that particular state, for this energy uh, supply, it will be able to consume. So for some other state, which is if let's say we are going to connect into the distribution level, which is on the this low voltage or on the medium voltage level, basically it will scatter around in that state. So based on these two places, actually we are able to focus to generate more power. However, we do understand some state, for example like Selangor, the land it could, it could yeah. be quite costly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so how can we capture more renewable energy in that case? So right now we're back to the national energy, uh, this uh, grid level, which is on the um, high voltage level. Right. Yeah, because right now for this uh, new policy, which is CRES, actually we will be able uh, to supply, uh, let's say the solar system is at Kerda, and then the data center is in Selangor and Johor. And then the solar uh, power plants at Kerda, we were able to supply the energy power to supply to the, uh, this uh, data center in this uh, Selangor or Johor through national uh, grid. So, but we, what we need to do is we need to pay uh, TMB, uh, these uh, willing charges, so-called a toll fee. Mm. Yeah. So actually this uh, crash able to uh, unlock uh, the whole Malaysia in terms of cross-state kind of the uh, infrastructure or the grid inter uh, uh, interlink and also to share the energy supply from different state to different state. So basically, this will be the two measurements that how we are going to uh, balance up this huge hot area like in Johor and also in Selangor have a lot of this energy de demand, but we are able to uh, build more renewable energy from state level, from the national level to spread around this uh, energy supply uh, balancing yeah, equally to all the different uh, this, uh, state uh, with, based on their demand. I understand all these good stories and good uh, uh, narratives that we have and good initiatives that we have currently. But mm -hmm. I also want to understand the challenges moving forward in terms yep. of providing more uh, green energy uh, in Malaysia. Yep. Uh, what are some of the challenges or, or rather the room of improvements in that sense, right? Mm -hmm. Because for instance in Johor, Johor implementing guidelines requiring, uh, requiring data centers to use green energy. Mm -hmm. uh, is this feasible for them and what, are, what kind of uh, challenges or room of improvements that you see we needed? Yeah, I would say for most of the data center, uh, uh, by default, actually, they all have to go for renewable energy right. 100, which is they have the RE100, which means uh, a lot of their energy supply, they have to power by renewable energy 100%. Mm. Yeah. So I would say uh, this by default uh, from those uh, uh, data centers, like from um, state, like uh, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, uh, actually, it's no-brainer. So actually, this will lower down a lot of this uh, challenge mm -hmm. for us to really uh, ask them to comply with, uh, to subscribe with the uh, renewable energy. However, <laughs> there are some other challenge. It could happen over here. It could be, um, I would say, in the past, actually, we don't have crashed this kind of the, this uh, uh, policy. So which means data center, if you look into their building rooftop, actually, you can't really install solar a lot. Yeah, which you need a piece of big land yeah. uh, to install the solar farm for mm -hmm. that. So right now, we've Crest, actually it will be able to unleash and also unlock 
the challenge on the policy level for data center able to like have a virtual power purchase agreement to virtually supply the energy for them 100% from other states yeah, yeah from other states so this is uh, I will say one of the biggest breakthrough that what we are able to do secondly it will back to the uh, energy infrastructure stability so I will say Malaysia grid is pretty stable at the same time right now with the rise of technology of a renewable energy and battery storage actually battery storage able to make uh, this technology able to make data center the power supply able to be more stable mm. yeah and also this will be also a demand uh, for the country to have more building or let's say have more renewable energy when you apply solar energy or any other renewable energy you have to apply together with a battery storage together mm. as a combo so this will be the future so uh, and last but not least it will be on the incentive part so right now in Malaysia we have a green investment tax uh, allowance which include like solar energy plus battery storage able to lower down the investment capital cost mm. that by uh, uh, this uh, tax uh, energy uh, tax saving through uh, investment on those uh, uh, capex on the energy infrastructures for those uh, uh, business owner. I want to ask, ask about the crest and also the battery. The, the sure. crest first. Uh, when you said because it's we're gonna sort of democratize the way yeah. we we, we yeah. generate a uh, uh, green energy. Would that uh, lead to the, the increasing cost in terms of uh, in terms of the logistic uh, part of the energy transition, energy uh, 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 energy supply and all that? Yeah, that's a very good question. Yeah, in fact, yes. Yeah, somehow because um, right now, based on the crash, they have uh, two uh, different directions. So basically, the whole government, uh, we are encouraging more uh, power solution like solar power plant come with battery storage. That's why if you are building a solar farm together with uh, battery energy storage, you'll be able to pay the toll fee for TMB, mm -hmm. which is uh, 25 cents. But if let's say today, we are just purely solar farm, without any battery storage, by utilizing the whole energy grid from TMB side as a firm power, that you have to pay them for the wheeling charges for about 45 cents. So, which means from here, we were able to see all these, uh, these uh, toll charges, I will say, uh, wheeling charges, definitely it will be some additional cost right. for the grid. However, we need some of these uh, additional costs to maintain the grid uh, energy, uh, uh, the en Malaysia grid infrastructure stability. And also we need a lot of this uh, capital to, in, uh, to, I will say, enhance the, these are infrastructures. So this is where the cost coming from. So however, for, to move on, I would say definitely clean energy, definitely it will be uh, one of our alternative energy solution. Mm. But uh, at the same time, we also need to take care of these uh, infrastructure costs. So that's how yeah, all these costs is coming in right now. Yeah. Yes. All right. Uh, on the battery side, because yes. you mentioned that the solar farm needs to have a battery in terms yes. of uh, the, the operation, but for um, buildings itself, uh, yep. data center or other commercial building in the future, uh, this is uh, related to the developer, but do you, do you see or do you foresee that developer have the understanding and awareness of having this kind of infrastructure to support, you know, having <laughs> batteries to have solar and the new building moving forward? Uh, mm. We were talking about 20 years or 30 years down the road. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I would say for most of the uh, industrial players who are pioneers, who are uh, these uh, experienced, actually we all understand which is uh, this uh, battery storage which is important. Mm. Yeah, however, right now most industrial players face is a challenge of the cost itself. Right. Yeah, because I would say Malaysia, our energy cost is still uh, relatively one of the cheapest in Southeast Asia, even though uh, despite recently Malaysia government just uh, removed a major of those subsidies on the energy part, but it's still uh, relatively quite affordable. Mm -hmm. So that's why when we are going to implement this uh, battery energy storage, uh, basically we have to, the first thing that we have to come across is mainly on the commercial, the return of the investment. Yeah. So I would say uh, definitely this, we will see a lot of this, it will happen on the larger scale infrastructure side because uh, we have economy of scale. So when you have battery energy storage there, it will be easier for us to have financing. And uh, with economy of scale, we were able to have a much uh, affordable and also lower cost of this uh, battery storage for us to implement. Right. So you were able to see a lot of industrial on that utility scale battery storage going to implement. Then slowly it will move into this uh, commercial and also industrial building. Right. Then slowly it will move into residential. Mm. That's how the, the whole technology uh, revolution has always happened from the utility to industrial and also then only up, up to the end user side. All right. Uh, in conclusion, um for a data centers, so it, it suffice to say that for data centers uh, investors out there, yes. uh, they are welcome to Malaysia. We are ready in yes. terms of our electricity and also power yes. generation. In Malaysia, yeah. Yeah. yes, yes, I think Malaysia is very ready, and this what this is how uh, it get Malaysia up to the top three of the yeah. country around the world that are able to um, it, uh, welcomes there are so many uh, data center come to Malaysia. All right. Yeah.
All right, Coach Fan, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you so much for uh, making me and the audience understand the whole situation. Uh, Coach Fan Zen, uh, Group CEO and also Co-Founder Plus uh, Xenergy, uh, joining us uh, to discuss about the data center and also the electricity required. And the most important part is the uh, green uh, energy needed uh, to uh, support uh, this development and also this uh, phase of development for data centers in Malaysia. Okay, uh, that's it for Niaga Awani. We're going to go for a short break. Coming up after this uh, with uh, Niaga Spotlight.